I know what you're thinking, but it's not what it looks like. This is a 48 inch LG Ultra Gear gaming monitor. Yep, yeah, I, I said it, a, a monitor. You could use it as a TV, I suppose, but what this is really targeted toward is the Avid Gamer. Like I said, 48 inch diagonal. This is a 4K display, so it's going to have a very, very high PPI. Uh, 120 hertz refresh rate. It can be overclocked up to 138, less than one millisecond greater grade response time, and that's because this is an OLED panel, so you get plenty of pros when choosing OLED over something else. It is a bit more expensive, but it's just, it's the best all around in my view for a monitor or a TV. And then NVIDIA G-Sync compatible as well. Uh, this is gonna be like the ultimate gaming monitor I expect. I can't wait to get this thing out of the box. Let's do that right now. I'm, uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say I might need a second person to help me out with it. Holy cow, this is thin. Wow. For the stand installation, it's gonna take four screws to tighten this back plate down. By the way, this does support VESA mounting, which is nice. And then we've got three more screws down here at the feet from below. And the last little piece here. There we go. It's a beautiful symphony to my ears. Look at how good this thing looks just from behind. I mean, holy cow, you're not even gonna be seeing this, but this is art right here. And I barely, heck, this barely fits in the frame. I'm like squeaking out from the top here. This thing is enormous. So what do you say we fire her up? A few moments later. Wow. This is really something. I tell you what, you get used to OLED and it's very difficult to go back to anything else. Excellent colors, incredible contrast. The response time here, just in this one test, this one UFO test, is so minimal. You can't see any tails at all behind any UFO. And if you do, it's so, so slight. The human eye can't really see it unless we slow things down on camera. The response time for this panel is something in the realm of 0.1 milliseconds, which puts even TN technology to shame. And obviously this is a completely different image than what you'd find on a TN panel. So a lot of esports gamers like to use TN because, well, first off, it does have very, very low response times, which means ghosting is minimal. In a test like this, if a monitor had very bad ghosting, you would see long, exact exaggerated tails behind each UFO. And that's indicative of a frame not being able to disappear quick enough. The pixel cannot transition from one frame to another in the time that the image is trying to do that on screen. And so you get these tails that, uh, well, just aren't very desirable. A few other things I'd like to point out about this giant monitor, the fact that you won't find a logo anywhere around the bezel, which is already pretty small, so that's nice. You do get an LG logo here on the stand to the left. I like that the stand is, is fairly small, uh, with respect to the actual size of the panel. So that's nice, but it is very sturdy. I and mean, this isn't, yeah, this isn't going anywhere. Uh, we've got the Ultra Gear logo off to the right. And then you'll notice down here at the bottom, we actually have a headphone jack. So you can plug your headphones directly into the monitor right here instead of running them, I don't know, behind, uh, behind everything into your desktop uh, or running things wirelessly. So it's nice if you just want to plug it in very quickly, you have access there. But it, it's not like, you know, it doesn't stand out like a sore thumb. It's subtle and I like that. And if you remember from earlier, I said that this panel was super thin. Of course it is up top. It is like just razor thin. It's insane. What is, what is Pepsi Girl doing over there? Pepsi Girl, what are you doing? Pepsi Girl. Hey. You also get this included remote, or it's kind of like a remote. It's pretty chonky, but that's because they intend for you to set it on a desk. But uh, you've got all your different modes here you can select. Uh, you can switch between different game modes. You can see it's pretty instantaneous on screen there, just cycling through them. Uh, and then you've got your menu button, uh, your source button at the top right. So a lot you can do here with it. Um, you can just navigate left and right by scrolling this wheel and then clicking when you want to select something. It's pretty intuitive. I think this beats the heck out of just a, a random toggle at the back of what you'd find in most traditional monitors. But hold up, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves before I show you gameplay. And this is just gonna look incredible, I think, on this monitor. Uh, what I wanna do is show you how I've set things up and talk about some of the potential limitations you might run into, particularly with the use of an HDMI cable. So these are the ports you'll find at the back of the 48 GQ900. You can see we've got three HDMIs, an optical out, USBs off to the right, and a display port connector off to the left. Now, a lot of TVs out there, in fact, every TV I've worked with omits the display port. And the downside to that 
is that you're going to be limited to HDMI use and only the newest graphics cards out there support HDMI 2.1, which is needed for 4K 120 hertz. So you'll not only want to be aware of the HDMI cable you're using because older versions likely won't support 4K 120, but you'll also want to be aware of the graphics card you're using. This here is a GTX 1050 and while it does have an HDMI port, it does not support HDMI 2.1, which is needed for 4K 120 out. You'll have to resort to using the display port uh, more than likely and this should have the necessary bandwidth for 4k 120 to take full advantage of our display again that's one of the reasons why you might want to choose this here over a traditional tv the fact that this has a display port port means that you won't be limited potentially by the use of HDMI. All of that said, the entire point of a 4K 120 hertz or 138 hertz display would be to see all 120 or 138 frames in a game at the 4K resolution. To do that, we're gonna need some pretty powerful hardware. This is an Intel 11th gen Core i7 rig, and I've got an RX 6800 in here, which does include HDMI 2.1 support, so we can run HDMI directly from the card into the monitor uh, and get that full experience. Now again, I could just use a DisplayPort cable, but I don't have one long enough to reach from the rig down here on the floor to the monitor. Don't put your rig on the floor. Please don't. Ah, why does this game always have some sort of like 100 gig update every single time I open it? Okay, so I must confess a few things now that we're uh, playing Call of Duty. This uh, is definitely a much bigger screen than I would normally choose for a game like this. I'm also sitting about as far as I normally would from a monitor. Holy cow, my aim is awful. Why did my teammate shoot me? Who did that? Who did that? Anyway, uh, yeah, 48 inches is, uh, is it's pr pretty big. Yeah, I mean, I, I could probably adjust to this, but I think I prefer a smaller monitor for a game like this. So just be aware of that going into it. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. I mean, we're just pegged at 130, 138 FPS. It's super fluid, very smooth. Uh, can't fault the monitor there. I just think the size isn't really helping me when it comes to a game like this. Holy cow. I. I I'm so bad at this game. Now, Shoot has a slightly larger map. We're still pegged at 138 FPS. I'm getting shot at from behind. There he was. Not doing too bad here. But again, still, I, it's just, it's gonna take quite a bit of adjusting. And that's okay. I used to play Call of Duty on a TV uh, larger than this, so. It's not like it's impossible. It's just not the first choice, I would say, for esports players. Um, I'm far from that. <laughs> far, far from an esports player in this kind of game. Now, I am not the greatest Fortnite player, and I know what some of you are thinking. Oh, Fortnite, how could you, Greg? Well, I chose this game because, well, it gives you a third-person perspective standard, which is a little different than what we were seeing with Call of Duty in the first-person perspective. I think it works a bit better here. The larger screen size doesn't hinder my performance as much. Granted, again, I am pretty trash at this game. Uh, but overall, I think it is... Uh, yeah, it's just a more tolerable experience. Let's see, how am I? I, I need to find a gun or something. I need, I, need, I need something here. The 4K resolution is very nice. You can see in very high detail all the things in your inventory, buttons, anything like that that you're trying to see on screen. Very legible with the larger footprint. And it even works well for things like the minimap. Now this extends to many games, uh, not just Fortnite, but seeing more detail on a minimap like this because your screen is larger and you still have that high resolution is going to be helpful. I mean, maybe not all the time, but uh, it's nice to not have to squint to see details on something like this. Racing games are definitely this monitor's strong suit. I stand by that. I mean, just looking at how smooth this is, locked at 138 FPS. This is 4K medium settings. High was getting a little below 120, so I wanted to, to fully max it out here. But could you imagine having three of these panels? Just one in the middle, two on the sides for like the ultimate racing sim setup. Holy cow, just one of these I think would complete it. It's so large, you sit fairly close to it so it feels immersive already. And mm, boy, if you ever thought a frame rate like this looked good, try it in the 4K resolution. That is just the icing on the cake. Another great quality of OLED panels is they're generally great viewing angles up to virtually 180 degrees here. Uh, you won't see any color distortion or anything like that. So if you have friends watching you from the sides, they will see the exact same thing you do. Oh, and did I mention, this also has NVIDIA G-Sync built-in. Now we're using an AMD graphics card, but it's nice to know that this has been validated by NVIDIA. I'm also very annoyed by the fact that this Windows watermark just popped up. I'll have to take care of that at a later date. Let's talk a few additional features of the 48GQ900, starting first with the anti-glare coating over the screen. So you can see, these are my studio lights. They're freaking bright, autofocus is going crazy. But look at that glare. It's so minimal, and especially when you've got things lit up on screen, 
it's very reduced. I can tell you so much better than a lot of my traditional displays that I use in here. Uh, so that's really nice to see anti-reflective coating. Uh, you could use this outside if you have a reflection from your windows. It's definitely not going to hinder the image as much as uh, yeah, an older, cheaper panel. The other thing I wanted to mention was the uh, built-in speaker setup here. 40 watt speakers, you've probably heard them already. They sound very good. Now look, I use LG TVs pretty much throughout my entire house. I've got a giant LG TV there. I've got an LG OLED down downstairs in the living room and they both have really good built-in speakers this is no exception you could totally run with these without issues at all i have no idea how well or not well this is going to work but just so you get an idea of what they sound like So, LG have done it, yeah? They've created the ultimate gaming monitor, albeit a bit large for my taste, but I think it works in the right setting. The 48GQ900 has everything. It has the, the trifecta of monitor specifications in my view. That's 4K, that's OLED, and the refresh rate, 138 hertz. I mean, even 120 would have been fine. The fact that you can overclock to 138 is just mm, chef's kiss. You can run this over HDMI 2.1. You can get, I think, uh, uncompressed uh, 4K 144 hertz, theoretically, over HDMI 2.1. So it's nice that you have that, but also the DisplayPort option, which you don't get in a lot of TV, so it should work natively with a lot of graphics cards out there. Just make sure, again, you've got the horsepower in your rig to keep up. Um, the size is going to be, I think, the one big hurdle for a lot of folks who want to just set this up in a traditional office setting. You're going to want to maybe sit a bit further away from your monitor than you normally would. You've got pretty awesome 40 watt speakers in this thing. The OLED technology is great not only for viewing angles, but also obviously contrast and excellent vibrant color reproduction. And the high refresh rate isn't hindered by a low response time. Like I said, it's the ultimate panel. The question now is whether or not you think it's worth the asking price. With that, you can learn more about this panel by clicking the sponsor link at the top of this video's description. Big thanks again to LG for supporting this one. Uh, be sure to let me know in the comment section below what you think about this. Is this too big for you? What could you see yourself using this for gaming wise? What games do you think will work best with a panel this size? How far back would you optimally want to sit to, to utilize this? I'm considering replacing the larger screen on my wall back there with this. This might be a bit small for the distance I sit from the screen, which the couch is over there, but uh, I, I might, I don't know. Maybe I'll hang this up somewhere else. Maybe I'll, I, I have no idea. I have too many screens. I, I gotta figure out how to downsize because it's driving the wife insane. I don't really blame her. I had to give away a TV yesterday because we just don't have, <laughs> just don't have the room for extras anymore. So if I can't find a good use for one of these screens in here, it's gonna, yeah, I'll have to give it away or something. We'll see. But um, I, I definitely want to hold on to this for a little while because it's the only 4K monitor so to speak, that I have on hand right now. And it's definitely the only 4K high refresh rate monitor. Um, it's large, it takes up some space, but it's just freaking epic. So that's that's my take on it. Uh, with that, consider subscribing if you haven't already. Consider giving someone a like or dislike, depending on how you felt. Again, comment section's down there for comments. And I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.